Hey friend, I'm Cole Sager. Thanks for stopping by the YouTube channel. Today, I wanted to talk to you about injuries and setbacks. As individuals and as athletes, these can be some of the biggest roadblocks that impede our performance and our progress moving forward. We're never gonna get to the level of success that we want if we don't learn to adapt and overcome. So let's dive into that. I just want to give you a little bit of backstory first. I'm in the peak of my training season when training for the CrossFit Games. June and July is like prime time to be training as hard as possible so we can be prepared for the games in August. A couple weeks ago, I suffered a rib injury doing hip extension and just kept hitting it repeatedly and not really knowing it at the time, but ended up bruising my rib cage pretty gnarly. Like, it's pretty painful. And it's gotten to the point where I can't do a lot of movements. There's a lot of things that I can't do when it requires twisting or balancing, a lot of oblique movements. I get this big stabbing pain in my rib cage and that's something that I've had to adjust and work through because it's not only physically debilitating in ways, but also like it starts to play with my mind a little bit. So I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about some of the things that I'm doing to make sure I can keep moving forward even in the midst of an injury or a setback. So I think one of the big questions becomes, how do we determine what we should train through and when we should adjust? First, let's make it very clear. If you've suffered from a bad injury, and I think you know when you've suffered from a bad injury, you shouldn't be watching this YouTube video, you should be seeing a doctor right now. So let's just make that very clear. Major things, those are the times when you see a specialist, you take the time to recover, let it rest up, let it heal, so you can get back to full swing, give it the time it needs. It's gonna pay off in the long run. And then there's the, pains on the complete opposite end of the spectrum, things like muscle soreness and little aches and pains in here, but the ones that I'm talking about are the ones right in the middle, the ones like I suffered, the ones that really are hindering, that are persisting and really uncomfortable and are stopping you from being able to move forward in the effort and intensity that you want to. When you suffer from an injury like this, the best thing that you can remember is adjusting is better than quitting. Don't just accept that you can't do anything. Keep in mind that there is still something that you can do and you wanna approach it with that kind of an attitude. The best thing that you can be asking yourself is what can I do now? So in my training, even though we're prepping for the games and this is my peak time to be getting after workouts, Ben didn't alter my training. He gave me the autonomy to make the adjustments that I needed to make. So he put my program in there and me and Genesee every day, we look at it and we, we say, okay, like here, those are the movements that we need to change. These are the things that we need to adjust. And we found a way to keep intensity, to keep good quality workouts. An example of this was early on when I, when I first su suffered from the injury, I couldn't do bar muscles. Like that was like, a, that was a hard no. And I looked at it and I said, okay, what is it that I can do now? I can't, I, I can't do bar muscle ups. So I slowly figured out like, oh, okay, I can at least pull in a horizontal plane. So I ended up taking the workout and adjusting it and pl placing in some ring rows, some overhead dumbbell squats, some things that were put me in a stable position that I could brace my rib cage. So I could, I could keep moving through it and I could find some ways to keep intensity and good workout. And that's why I'm saying you gotta be willing to adjust. You can't just throw your hands up in the air and quit. You gotta still get in and you gotta find out what you can do. One of the things we realized early on when I hurt my rib was that I was having a hard time doing anything that went overhead. And Genesee very wisely said, maybe you should warm up a little bit better. I had to do a longer, more extensive warm up than I normally do. And sure enough, just something that simple created a little bit more space so I didn't have so much pressure on my rib cage. I'm a big believer that stress can hinder recovery and performance. So we do the best that we can to minimize it at all costs. My recovery outside of training has looked very different. Everything is focused around making sure that my rib is feeling better and feeling good. 
And then one of the things that I didn't do a very good job of that I realized and I've now started to work on was the extra stress that having an injury causes and it caused me to get into a little bit of a negative mindset earlier in the week. And when we got mindful of what that was doing, we started to pay attention to my attitude and making sure that we're just positive and understanding like, hey, look, we're working through this and we'll get through this. And all we can do is control our attitude and our adjustments in the moment now. As a games athlete, absolutely if pulling is programmed, I want to try to find a modality and a movement that will allow me to continue to mimic some sort of a pull. But as a recreational athlete, you have that luxury and that flexibility to, if you just need to take a step back and, and take some time off from pulling movements because you hurt a rib or you, you pulled a muscle, like that's okay. This is my career, this is my profession. So that's why I'm still trying to find ways to really work around and get as close to the workout as I can but it's okay to make adjustments. It's okay to take a step back, give your body the rest it needs, so you can rest and relax and get back to it at full effort because you at full effort is a much better you than an injured you. So currently right now, I'm at the point where I can do just about every movement. I've started to recover pretty fast, but there are still some like bar muscle ups I'm just laying off of and I'm staying away from. D-ball holds and D-ball carries. Probably not smart to put a D ball smashed up against the rib right now. But in the movements that I can do, I'm just being extremely hypersensitive to making sure that I'm not causing any more damage. So it can recover and it can mend and I can get back to 100% because 100% is the best place to be at the games. I truly believe that this applies to everyone in everyone's circumstances, whether you're suffering from something that is long-term or something a little short-term like I'm going through, whatever it is, we still have to have the frame of mind that we're gonna make the best of whatever our situation is. So listen to your body, do the best you can, keep moving forward, and remember to enjoy the process. I'm out. Oh, that one's close. How's your rib? Good. I'm finding the bolts. Braced really well and made changes where I needed to, whether it be in the pull-up grip or tightening my kip up, whatever it was, I just, I made adaptations as I went just to keep the pressure off the rib, but overall went well. I kept the dumbbell back a little bit farther so I didn't get crunched in the front here. That put a lot of pressure on the rib and just kept it open. I was able to just brace overall a lot better, so. I thought good changes, good changes as I went. So listen to your body, do the best you can. I don't remember the third one. <laughs> and enjoy the process. <laughs> <laughs> What's the third one? And I end with this. <laughs> <laughs> Out, <Rim. laughs>